For over 60 years, castles have been an iconic feature of every Disneyland park in the world. Whether it be their majestical size, glooming beauty, or intimate designs, these castles have captivated entire generations of people from all over the world to visit Disney parks and uh, groove on the magical nature of these structures. Which is why today I wanted to share with you my personal top 6 castles from all Disney parks around the world. Having the awesome opportunity to visit all the Disney parks on multiple occasions, I thought it would be the best time to share my personal thoughts on each castle and explain the strengths and weaknesses of each building. Now of course, once again, this is going to be my opinion, and I've told you this before, but I'm kind of overly critical in some things, so please take things I say with a grain of salt. Anyways, let's move on to number 6, which is Sleeping Beauty Castle at Hong Kong Disneyland. For this list, we are going to be looking at the pre-2018 Hong Kong Disneyland Castle, since no one has really seen the new, completely finished Hong Kong Disneyland Castle as of recording this video. The pre-2018 Hong Kong Disneyland Castle is almost, if not a complete copy of the original castle over in Disneyland, California, which is kind of the reason why I put this castle straight at last. It has the same classic look as the original castle from Anaheim, but unfortunately lacks the same spirit and magic found from the original. I, I can't really explain why, but the original castle has this intimate and magical feeling tied to its looks, while Hong Kong Disneyland's castle comes off as just small and underwhelming. It might be because of the fact that Hong Kong's castle is a direct copy of the original with no significant changes, but regardless, the castle doesn't really have that much of a welcome feeling either compared to the other castles on this list. I mean, it's not all bad. The mountain ranges in the back really give off this realistic charming look and the castle scales really well with the park is really small. But the castle, once again, does lack that feeling that the other castles have, that intimacy. Which is why I'm really glad that Disney is currently rebuilding Hong Kong Disneyland's castle into something that's actually going to give its own personality rather than its current lackluster copy and paste. Moving on to number 5 is the Enchanted Storybook Castle at Shanghai Disneyland. This may come as a surprise to some of you since many people on the internet say that this is the biggest and best castle Disney has ever built. But for me, bigger doesn't always mean better. Although the castle is absolutely huge and very beautiful on the inside, it lacks the heart and soul that the other castles have. Instead of having this magical or intimate feeling, it instead just comes off as just big. And that's about it. Big isn't really a personality. It also doesn't help that at a distance, the castle looks almost exactly the same from practically every angle you look at it. Not only is this not aesthetically pleasing, it also makes it very hard to identify where you are in the park. Typically, a good Disney castle will stand as the center focal point and help guests find their way around the park. Shanghai Disneyland's castle, on the other hand, is the central focal point of the park, but due to its rather bland design, makes it very hard for anybody to really find their way around. I got lost a couple times, I couldn't even tell where I was looking at the castle. Now, the walkthrough, restaurant, and the shop are absolute positives, and also, not to mention the ride that partially goes through the castle as well, since they do show off the more beautiful parts of the building, but still, the exterior designs are so bland and generic that I really can't put it any higher on this list. Hopefully for Disney's next park, they won't make the same mistake, and hopefully create a castle that actually has the magical and intimate feels that we've come to expect from Disney. Next at number 4 is Cinderella Castle at the Magic Kingdom Park in Walt Disney World, Florida. Now I really do love the color palette and the size of this castle. Yeah, sure, Shanghai Disneyland's castle is huge, okay, whatever. But it's lacking one humongous thing when it's compared directly to Magic Kingdom's castle, and that is personality. Magic Kingdom's castle does a damn good job at serving as the central focal point for the park, and it also has its own personality, along with its own unique designs that almost makes it feel magical. So if this castle is so great, why is it number 4 out of number 6? Well you see, though Magic Kingdom's castle does do many things right, they do do a great deal of things wrong. Like for one, intimacy. 
For me, there are two elements that make up a great Disney castle. One of which is having the opportunity to walk up and explore things from inside of the castle. Magic Kingdom's castle does have stuff on the inside. Two out of three of which a regular guest can visit, such as Cinderella's Royal Table and the Bippity Boppity thing bob But outside of that, there really isn't much to do once you're inside of the castle. On top of that, it, it kind of bugs me that you're not able to walk straight through the castle. Like, yeah, okay, to some people this is more of a minor thing, but walking around to the sides rather than straight through the castle, for me, takes away from that intimate, magical feeling. It's just not as much of a magical experience to walk around than through the castle instead of just straight through. And this is why I decided to put Magic Kingdom's castle at number 4. However, it doesn't change the fact that I still do believe this is a wonderful and beautiful castle design. Coming up next is number 3, which is Cinderella Castle at Tokyo Disneyland. Wait, isn't that the same castle as Magic Kingdom, I hear you asking? Uh, uh, well, yes, but actually no. Tokyo Disneyland's and the Magic Kingdom's castle are in fact very similar to one another, however there are differences between the two that gives Tokyo Disneyland's castle just a slight edge over Magic Kingdom's castle. That slight edge is the fact that there's a really cool walkthrough that you can take in Tokyo Disneyland's castle. The walkthrough tells the story of Cinderella, but in a unique and very cool way. Kind of the way how Disney Imagineers did the Sleeping Beauty Castle over in Disneyland, California, but much more elegant, if you know what I'm saying. Apart from the walkthrough and the very slight changes in both the exterior designs and color palettes, the castle is basically the same as the castle over in Magic Kingdom, which means it unfortunately brings over the same problems, like not being able to walk directly straight through the castle. It, well, I mean, kind of the same problem. Like, you don't need to walk as far to the right or to the left at Tokyo Disneyland's castle versus Magic Kingdom's castle. But still, not being able to walk straight through the center does take away from the majestic and awe compared to walking straight through. Which is why I still do believe Tokyo Disneyland's castle fits perfectly at number 3. Next up at number 2 is Sleeping Beauty Castle at Disneyland Park in California. Now this decision may seem a little unorthodox to some, since many people like to say that the castle at Magic Kingdom is better than the castle at Disneyland. But to me, uh, there's no comparison. For Disneyland's castle, it's the little details that truly stand out. Like not being able to walk straight through the castle may seem like a tiny, insignificant thing, but for me, it makes a huge difference. In a way, you feel much more closer connected to the castle, and it's almost like you are stepping into and through a magical place. It's really hard to explain, but there's almost a homey feeling you get with Disneyland's castle. Almost like someone saying, Welcome home after a long day. Something that the other Disney castles before can't really replicate. Okay, yeah, the castle is small and it's old and in some places it looks a little wonky, but there's something about it that always calls you back to it every time. Regardless though, there are some things I don't really like about this castle that makes it not as appealing for the number one spot on this list, mostly the design of the castle. And no, I am not talking about the stars. People on Twitter were going on about the stars and how bad they look. No, they, they, they look nice. I like the stars. Look, it's magical. It's really cool. What I don't like, however, is how the color scheme of the castle gets lighter on the taller points of the structure. Now, by all means, it is not a bad design at all. It's rather a very lovely design since it gives the illusion that the castle is much taller than it actually is. The problem is, this illusion doesn't really work for Disneyland's castle. The thing is, there are other structures like trees which are much taller than the castle, but do not share the same color scheme of getting lighter the taller they go. Now this thing doesn't really affect my opinions in terms of this review, but it kind of does bug me since it ruins the illusion of the castle and at the same time makes the castle look a lot shorter than it actually is. In the end, though this castle is really good, I do think there is one castle that does things just a tad bit better than Disneyland's castle. But first, I want to throw in this really quick curveball with an honorable mention. I know this video is only supposed to really be about castles, but I just had to include this one since it's just so well done. What is it you may ask? It's Mount Prometheus at Tokyo Disney Sea. 
Now, I'm not really going to dive too deep into why, but if this were a video on the best non-castles at Disney parks, I'd easily give it to Prometheus any day. The way how the volcano is designed just wraps you into its immersive size. There are two rides inside the volcano, one ride that actually goes through the volcano, many eateries, games, and it even explodes. Very crazy. Not too crazy or to a point to where it catches itself on fire, but ah, crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. I just love it way too much to not include it in this list. Anyways, let's move on. And finally, last but not least, is the Sleeping Beauty Castle at Disneyland Paris. Now, it does have its own French pronunciation, but uh, I, I tried to pronounce it multiple times, and it's just incredibly complicated because I'm an American, and oh, oh boy. I'll leave it on the screen, uh, but I, I, I can't pronounce it. It basically means Sleeping Beauty Castle, so it's the same thing. <laughs> it's just, French is hard. For me, this is the best castle Disney has ever built. Basically, Disneyland Paris's castle takes the positives from all the other castles before it and makes it better in one complete package. The castle was grand and majestic, while still allowing its guests to walk straight through and completely through the whole structure. On top of that, Disneyland Paris's castle is the only castle to have a massive and pretty amazing dungeon with a huge animatronic dragon that breathes out smoke. It is incredibly crazy, and the video you're watching here really doesn't do it justice. It's pretty crazy to see that thing moving, and it's completely something else to actually be there in person. I know putting Disneyland Paris' castle first might be a little bit of a controversial pick, but for me, when it comes to pure beauty, intimacy, and just amazingly thought out designs, and partially inappropriate scenes, there's no castle that can outmatch Disneyland Paris' castle. In the end though, each castle has its own personality, strengths, and weaknesses. Regardless of what I said, whichever castle you choose to be your favorite, just remember that castle is unique and deserves its own place as number one on anybody's list. Well, alright guys, that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I liked making it. Yay! You know, if you have your own opinion about which castle is the best, be sure to leave it down below in the comment section. I would love to hear all of you guys' opinions. Because, you know, there's no reason for us to be fighting over which is the best castle, which is the best ride. We all have, we're all human, we all have different opinions, of course. On a weird side note though, when I finished recording this video, I actually found an article where they basically said almost the same exact thing I said in this video. Like, it's, it's actually kind of creepy. Like, our opinions and our honorable mentions were basically the same. Very, very eerie. I, 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 don't, I don't know... I don't know, maybe they time traveled in the in the future and copied my video. <laughs> I don't know, I'm giving I'm giving myself way too much credit there. Uh, I found it really interesting though, but yeah, if you want to check out the ar uh, article, which basically says something I, I did, just go down below and just click on the link down there if I don't forget. <laughs> it's just really interesting to, uh, to see. Anyways, thank you all again for watching. I finally got a video out in a timely manner, and hopefully I will see you again for the next video. That will be hopefully next week, or the week after that. Or the week after that. Or maybe the week after that. Or maybe the year after that. Or maybe the decade. Never know. Maybe, maybe even a century. I won't even be alive in a century. But yeah, maybe a century. Yeah, a century sounds pretty good.